Hi everyone, Mr. Tobin here and welcome to this video where we're going to look at the poem Nessa by Paul Durkin. First we're going to look at a little background to give us a better understanding of what's happening in the poem, then we'll go through the poem line by line and we'll finish up by looking at some of the main things you can talk about in this poem if a question on Durkin comes up in your exam. So to begin with, let's look at where this poem is coming from. This poem is from Durkin's first collection, O Westport in the Light of Asia Minor, published in 1975. It recalls the first time that the poet met his future wife Nessa at the Shangri-La Hotel, a hotel which has since closed but was a hugely popular hotel in the 70s in Dalkey in Dublin, overlooking the sea. We know that Durkin's marriage to Nessa ended after 16 years in 1984 and perhaps there is a hint in this poem about the sort of relationship he is entering into. For more background on Durkin, please see my introduction to Durkin video, the link to that is in the description below. So let's begin first by having a read through the poem itself. I met her on the 1st of August in the Shangri-La Hotel. She took me by the index finger and dropped me in her well. And that was a whirlpool, that was a whirlpool and I very nearly drowned. Take off your pants, she said to me, and I very nearly didn't. Would you care to swim, she said to me, and I hopped into the Irish Sea. And that was a whirlpool, that was a whirlpool and I very nearly drowned. On the way back I fell in the field and she fell down beside me. I'd have lain in the grass with her all my life with Nessa. She was a whirlpool, she was a whirlpool, and I very nearly drowned. Oh Nessa, my dear, Nessa, my dear, will you stay with me on the rocks? Will you come from me into the Irish Sea and from me let your red hair down? And then we will ride into Dublin City in a taxi cab wrapped up in dust. Oh you are a whirlpool, you are a whirlpool, and I am very nearly drowned. Before we examine this poem line by line, it's important to know that Durkin is a very visual poet. He composes almost like a film director. He puts shots or images next to one another and he frames the whole poem as a sequence of images that convey a meaning. As we will see in this poem, each stanza conveys an image which, when put side by side, tells a story and evokes a feeling in the reader. So the title of any poem is important and this one is very simple. It's the name of the woman he discusses in the poem itself. When we see more of Durkin's poems, we realise that titles are very important to him and often they are long-winded and very descriptive, like newspaper headlines. This one, by its simplicity, sets the poem apart from his others. So let's take a look at stanza one. I met her on the 1st of August in the Shangri-La Hotel. She took me by the index finger and dropped me in her well. And that was a whirlpool, that was a whirlpool, and I very nearly drowned. So the poet tells us that he met this woman on the 1st of August at a hotel called the Shangri-La in Dublin. The fact that he remembers the specific date tells us that this is an important time and also the name of the hotel is worth paying attention to. There was an actual hotel in Dalkey, as we've mentioned, called the Shangri-La Hotel, but the name Shangri-La is usually used to describe a paradise or a utopia. Perhaps he is hinting at the utopian nature of this woman or that she is perfection in some way. The next two lines can be read in a number of ways. The speaker says that she took him by the index finger and dropped me in her well. While there is a sexual suggestion here that is very much characteristic of Durkin's poetry, it also shows us that Nessa is taking the lead in this interaction. She's not shy. She is presented as a strong female presence, again another characteristic of Durkin's work. The fact that he is dropped in her well is also open to interpretation. Continuing on with the idea of sexual imagery, it's quite obvious what her well could be, but also it suggests a portal or a doorway into another world. The well could act as a means to transport him into a utopia or a fairy tale future with this woman. The last two lines in the first stanza are repeated throughout. The speaker repeats the statement, that was a whirlpool, before saying, and I very nearly drowned. Whirlpools are areas of swirling water that usually occur where there are two opposing currents, but more usually we see them in the sink or the bath when we take the plug out. They are dangerous as they rotate at speed. You could be swept away by the power of a whirlpool and pulled underneath the water. The speaker hints at the danger involved by saying that he is very nearly drowned. So meeting Nessa, while we can tell that it's something he clearly remembers, it's a very important moment in his life. It's also fraught with danger. He very nearly drowned, he says. I don't think we should take this to mean literally that Nessa is dangerous in some way. It's more the idea that he is so enamoured with her, he's so attracted to her, that it threatens to overwhelm him. Stanza two. Take off your pants, she said to me, and I very nearly didn't. Would you care to swim, she said to me, and I hopped into the Irish Sea. And that was a whirlpool, that was a whirlpool, and I very nearly drowned. So the first line of the second stanza is a command, which reinforces the idea of the woman taking the lead in this encounter. It's also not revealed until a few lines later why she's ordering him to take off his pants. This plays on the sexualized imagery from the first stanza. The second line is interesting as he says, I very nearly didn't. Again, there's an acknowledgement of the danger of allowing her to dominate him. 
for him to be entirely subsumed by love. We all know that person who, when they get into a relationship with someone, they change entirely from the person they were before. And instead of being themselves, they simply become the other person's partner. Perhaps the speaker is worried about something like that happening here. The third line is not a command, however, it's an invitation, and it signals a softening in her approach to him. When she commanded him to take off his pants, he nearly didn't. He still did, but he nearly didn't. But when she asks him if he wants to swim, he hops into the Irish Sea. So this is a familiar image to lots of people swimming on Ireland's coast. The hopping is even more vivid as it suggests that he may be trying to keep warm. We're not exactly famous for our warm water in our coastal area. Again, the same lines are repeated at the end of the stanza. As well as repetition for emphasis, we could also see these lines as the image of the whirlpool being the centre of the poem. This is a method of Durkin's that I explained fully in the introduction video. The link is in the description. But to recap briefly, Durkin's poems are often visual in nature and have a central point from which the rest of the poem radiates out. This was a technique that was popular among certain painters and it's known as a vortex, a central point in the picture that their brush keeps returning to and sweeping past. It's almost like an anchor for the entire poem. In Durkin's poetry he uses something similar and in this poem in particular that is the repeated image of this whirlpool. By constantly returning to it he's giving a solid base to the other ideas that he is exploring. Stanza 3 on the way back, I fell in the field and she fell down beside me. I'd have lain in the grass with her all my life with Nessa. She was a whirlpool, she was a whirlpool, and I very nearly drowned. On the way back to the hotel from swimming, the speaker falls down in a field and Nessa falls down beside him. There's an interesting illusion here. The speaker says the rather than a field, implying somewhere specific. And that, again, suggests to me that the falling here is another sexual image. In much of Durkin's poetry, he challenges the hypocrisy of gender inequality in Irish society, and the falling here could refer to the Victorian idea of the fallen woman. The Victorians were famously prudish about all things sexual, and perhaps Durkin is drawing links between Irish society's treatment of women and the Victorian period. A fallen woman was someone who had given up her chastity, she'd given up her virginity. It was usually meant to refer to a woman who was pregnant outside of marriage, or a promiscuous woman. Because of their behaviour, they had fallen from God's good grace. It's no coincidence either that she is presented as a strong, confident woman who takes the lead in their encounter, something that traditionally would not have been how things were done. And the fact it is he who falls down is also important. Durkin often assumes the persona of female or other marginalised characters in his poetry, and it's typical of his willingness to challenge social expectations to cast himself as the fallen woman before saying, she fell down beside me. The next two lines give us an indication that this is not a short-lived infatuation. He says that he would have lain in the grass with her all his life. He is so besotted with her, he's talking about the rest of their life together, shortly after their first meeting. Remember, their marriage ended almost 10 years after th this poem was published, but there's almost a sort of foreshadowing here with, I'd have lain, I would have laid, suggesting that he knows they won't stay together, as well as the repeated lines of, she was a whirlpool, and I very nearly drowned. Stanza four. O oh, Nessa, my dear, Nessa, my dear, will you stay with me on the rocks? Will you come from me into the Irish Sea and from me let your red hair down? And then we will ride into Dublin City in a taxi cab wrapped up in dust. Oh, you are a whirlpool, you are a whirlpool, and I'm very nearly drowned. This last stanza is two lines longer than the previous three stanzas and has some significant changes in the repetition at the end. Here the speaker is addressing Nessa herself, not simply describing to the reader their first meeting. The repetition of her name, Nessa, sets the tone. He is imploring her and he's being serious. It's suggestive of a more serious phase in their relationship. He asks her if she will stay with him, will she follow him and will she let her hair down for him? Perhaps a level of intimacy and revealing aspects of herself that she may not do publicly. The speaker is proposing a more serious relationship than the one described at the beginning. This is then followed by the image of the two of them in a taxi disappearing towards Dublin almost like a honeymoon car driving off from the church with a newly married couple inside that you might see in a film. The poem ends with a variation on the repetition of she was a whirlpool. It instead becomes you are a whirlpool, acknowledging the fact that he is now addressing her directly. And there's a change at the end as well to I am very nearly drowned. The poet shifts into the present tense with these lines, telling us that he is still enthralled to Nessa ever since their first meeting. Okay, so some poetic techniques to discuss. There are a few things that stand out in this poem that Durkin uses. First, and the most important one, I think, is, is the imagery that he establishes. As we said before, and as I go into more detail in the introduction video, this poem is a series of images arranged together to tell a story. So we see the image of the two meeting in the hotel, her taking the lead, 
and the image of the whirlpool. Next, we see the two swimming in the ocean and then back to the image of the whirlpool. After this, we have the image of the two lying side by side in a field and then back to the image of the whirlpool. And the final images are the two speeding off towards Dublin in the taxi and then finally back to the image of the whirlpool. This is an example of what I mentioned earlier. The story of the poem, the narrative, is centred on one repeated image, the anchor to it all, the whirlpool. So in simple terms, Nessa and the whirlpool are linked. The whirlpool is Nessa, but after finishing the poem, we see that this is not a negative image. He is describing a love that is all-encompassing. It swallowed him whole, and he's happy to be drowning in it. I hope that you've enjoyed this video, and please take a look at the other Durkin videos on the channel. If you haven't subscribed already, then please do, and I welcome all comments, suggestions, or requests.